Let's go! Did Spencer Sanders or Walker Howard just screw over Jackson Dart? What the heck is Lane Kiffin's master plan? I don't know, but today we're going to talk about what actually is happening with this Ole Miss quarterback room. I am still a little shocked that Spencer Sanders left Ole Miss to begin with, but comment down below who you think will be the QB1 for Ole Miss next year. So, obviously, Spencer Sanders, uh, you know, he was a four-year starter for the Cowboys, and I don't know exactly why he left, but he decided to leave. Now, did he get contacted by other schools? Was Ole Miss the school that he was going to the entire time? We don't know, but what I will also tell you is this is not the first Oklahoma State Cowboy that was very successful to leave for an SEC program. One of LSU's best corners last year was a guy by the name of Jarek Bernard Converse. A lot of LSU fans know him, and of course a lot of Alabama fans know him uh, for that phenomenal game he had in Tiger Stadium. So, you know, for me, if I'm Jackson Dart, I do feel some type of way about this. Do I? I enter the portal to go somewhere else. I don't know, but what we do know is Jackson's dart still has two years of eligibility remaining, and at the very least, Spencer Sanders only has one. So Dart still has you know light at the end of the tunnel if he wants to stay at Ole Miss. But if I was him, I would probably just stay and compete. He was not bad last year by any stretch of the imagination, but is he as good as Spencer Sanders? I don't know. Does he have as high of a ceiling as Walker Howard, who is a former five-star recruit and quarter to rivals? We don't know. Uh, they were about the same level of quarterback according to the 247 composite. So, you know, for me, I do feel a little for Jackson Dart, but, you know, this is the new age of college football. And something else I would also point out is Lane Kiffin is now officially the portal king of the SEC, right? Uh, there are some other guys you could point out that has just, you know, dominated the portal. But when you factor in how poorly Ole Miss actually does recruit out of high school, uh, they really need the portal. And Lane Kiffin doing what he's done with the transfer portal shows that this guy is really good at it. Even though he has lost a few key defenders to the portal, I do think for the most part, Ole Miss should feel pretty comfortable with the haul that they are bringing in. So comment down below your thoughts on this. Do you feel Lane Kiffin should have done this to Jackson Dart? <laughs> huh? 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 Dart was fine for them last year. The one thing, you know, his rushing numbers did look okay, but I was a little shocked at how many times they ran Dart for like one yard here, two, yard, two yards there. Maybe they feel a little bit better with the offense with Spencer Sanders and Walker Howard. Neither one of them are necessarily explosive runners themselves. So we'll see what happens. And uh, yeah, Ole Miss, you know, staying relevant for the next season should be a fun SEC West. So is there anything wrong with uh, Jackson Dart? I mean, you look at his QBR, it was in the 70s, which is honestly fine it's not exceptional but it, i mean it's pretty good it's right behind Jaden daniels of lsu and behind kj jefferson but you know you look at 247 they had him as a top 25 returning quarterback well i'll share with you a few things that i saw from jackson dart on tape towards the end of the season and i want you to remember this throw over the deep middle right here spencer sanders i know the competition isn't great here uapb but you know this ball right here it was a, a little I mean, there was a lot of air under it. Maybe a better DB gets there, but that was a good throw over the deep middle. So let's actually take a look uh, at some of the throws from Jackson Dart towards the end of the year. So obviously, you take a look at, you know, SEC StatCats numbers. Jackson Dart was a pretty good quarterback. Whether you look at success rate or explosive pass rate, he was in the upper tier uh, in the SEC. But where he struggled was this game versus Texas Tech. This game would have fed me up as well if I was Lane Kiffin right here. Obviously, on this fourth and three, you do want to throw it up because if it gets picked, it is an arm punt. So this actually turned out to be a good result. But as you see right there, Jackson Dart got hit pretty hard. And what I think honestly happened to him was he was playing through a lot of injuries. And there might not have been necessarily like a specific injury that happened. The truth is those injuries probably started to pile up because – Ling did run Jackson Dart a lot. So here's a good example right here on the second and four. Dart, who is not a special runner, I saw a lot of this versus Mississippi State as well. Um, 
you know, it, it was too much of, of this, right, where, you know, you have your quarterback as a big part of your running game. He takes a lot of hard hits, and he loses his football. Um, I think those hits began to start piling up for him, and he wasn't the same player. Now, I know the competition got tougher after the first seven games, as a lot of Ole Miss fans know. You started off 7-0, and and you ended the season the way that it did. But this was one big hit, but it was towards the end of the year. I'm going to show you one play that I thought really put Dart over the edge. Boom! I'm looking at you. Yes, you right now. So if you haven't already, subscribe, ring the bell. If you like this kind of film study-ish kind of content, we're mixing it up here to see what you guys really love here on Power Hour SEC. Feel free to drop a comment down below. Now, I remember this throw. You see a frustrated Jackson Dart. He had took a pretty hard hit uh, on the drive before uh, by Ali Gay of LSU. He does hit very, very hard. And you see Lane Kiffin is very, very frustrated. And after this miss, I felt as if Ole Miss's season was never quite the same. So what we're running here is basically just a simple, uh, just deep route right here. And it is one-on-one -on -one versus safety, and it's a double move, right? We get a play-action fake right here, and Greg Brooks just sits on this move. You see Mingo is faking the in-breaking route. Jackson Dart gives it a little pump fake, and now it's over the top for an easy tutty. And... All Jackson Dart has to do is just not make, you know, an overthrow here. He's got him by quite a bit. Score is still 17-10. to 10. Ole Miss had had, you know, three consecutive great drives. And you missed that one. And Lane was obviously very, very, very frustrated. See, Dart had a good start uh, to the game. But then after that, he just wasn't the same. Now we get to this third and 10. LSU got very exotic on third and long with Harold Perkins and B.J. Ojolari and all those pass rushers. And Lane Kiffin elects to call a QB draw, and you'll see right here, Dart, I mean, towards the end of the year, I don't think I can remember a quarterback who took as many tough shots where he was just driven directly into the ground like that, and those just began to pile up, and after this, he played horribly, and he played a little shook, um, trusting, I watch every second of every LSU game, and you know, he took this hit, and then he also, if you want to, you know, see a video we did earlier in the year, it's floating in the top right corner of your screen. He took a dirty hit from Dallas Turner as well, um, a, a very, very bad one. And honestly, he just wasn't the same player. And yes, he was never just really hurt, uh, if you will, but he was also uh, just not the same player. You could just see it if you watch, you know, every snap of every Ole Miss game. So, Maybe also bringing in these uh, all this quarterback talent. Obviously, Lane didn't feel comfortable with Luke Altmaier running the offense. Maybe some of this is Lane getting some insurance policies for the quarterback position because a big part of what he does is running with the quarterback, right? Um, you know, and I, I've always loved this about Jackson Dart. He wears a Jordan 11s. So, yeah, if the running game is a big part of what you want out of the quarterback— those hits begin to pile up, and, you know, you want a little bit more depth there to run this offense. Maybe there's something to that. I don't know. But the truth is, Dart was just not the same player when the schedule got tougher. I do think some of it were the injuries piling up. I, I'm not showing this, but he did take a very brutal hit on first down as well. And then here, here he is getting sacked by, you know, the best defensive player in the conference, Harold Perkins. So, yeah, I mean, this was... Uh, a, a tough year, right? And you would just see it. It took him forever, you know, at times to get up from these hits. And, yeah, so maybe Lane is just getting a few extra insurance policies. And keep in mind, Matt Corral himself also went through a ton of injuries. Here he is again. This time he doesn't get hit. But you see this ball is not well thrown. He has a wide open Jonathan Mingo, and it's behind him. You're just not the same guy when you start getting pulverized like that. So, you know, with Corral being injured and not really having a good backup option with, with Altmaier and then the same situation they were in last year, now Ole Miss, no matter what they do, will have a better backup quarterback situation. And Lane has seen this, right? And maybe more teams should do what Lane is doing and, you know, pony up and get a really, really good backup quarterback um, especially if you want the QB run to be a big part of your offense. So 
uh, for those saying, well, why are all these quarterbacks piling up for Ole Miss? I don't know. It's a good question. you got to ask them those things because playing time is going to be hard to get. Obviously, for, for all three of them, I do think Sanders will win this job. The truth is, it's a very good thing if you're an Ole Miss fan because oftentimes you're only as good as your best backup quarterback, right? Um, you can argue the backup quarterback is the second most important player on the team. So comment down below your thoughts on this video. Ole Miss fans in particular really would love to see what you guys have to say about today, okay? It is Power Hour SEC Bell. And tonight, we are doing lemon pepper chicken wings. Let's go!